yeah, Deadbeat. Uh, I'm not sure if they've played in scrims or a tournament in Splatoon 2 before, um, but at least in Splatoon 1 with the individuals that have played together, it's been... I, I think that's probably going to be the the close, the first close set that we see uh, in in G7 today. Uh, maybe Rising Moon and Creme Fresh might rise up to that, but I think Deadbeat and Extermination, the, the, the kind of, you know, the American champions versus one of the European greats, uh, obviously Rising Moon, Creme Fresh, Team Olive, they, they, and, and Spanish Army for that matter, they, they kind of lay an arm to that contestant, but Extermination, definitely one of the greats there, and that's going to be one, the, the best test of, the best first test of Death Beat to come. Uh, that being said, we will zoom on over to Team Olive versus Spanish Army. Uh, Team Olive, you were remarking, at least in, in the in the chats we were having before the the stream went up, in, in how remarkable their group run was. Mm -hmm. uh, calling it remarkable, I think, is putting it lightly. 7-0, 14-0 in games, or 12-0, whichever it is, if we don't count the buy as wins. Point is, they won, and they won by knockout pretty well every single time. They, of course, you know the names. You know the names. Soren, Nike, Dude, Fuzzy. You've seen them from the start of this. They've been a big player in Splatoon 2 since it started. They were a big player in Splatoon 1, but they were just dominant. Uh, they put up a great performance against every team, never really showing much weakness. There was never really a moment where they didn't seem in control. And they stayed with a pretty consistent comp all the way throughout. Soren using the Tri-Slosher. Nike, once known for being arguably the best sniper in the Western scene, using pretty well exclusively NZAP. Dude playing flex, but leaning on the Splattershot Pro more often than not, of course. We know Dude is liable to change weapon at any time. And Fuzzy going with that patented T-Tech, and they just got it. Their positional play and their ability to take the turrets that they need to take back, incredible. I mean, it's something that you can't teach, and they have it. Um, Sendow is on the roster. Sendow did not see any playing time in the group stages. I don't know if Sendow is available today or if they will use him, but I, in my opinion, don't mess with success. Yesterday was just a slaughter as far as Team Olive was concerned. Hmm. Yeah. Well, with uh, with you know all that's been said and done, uh, we will be able to move into this next set, obviously using the same map list that we've seen time and time again. Uh, and yeah, obviously, Sendu probably not to be played here. Uh, but Team Olive as a whole, top to bottom, looking pretty spanky. Whereas the Spanish Army, they've played together for quite a while. And honestly, this is my first glimpse in their Splatoon 2 play. In Splatoon 1, they were one of at one point not too known and kind of came out of came out of the gutters and and started at least for me kind of shocked me in how quickly they they took on the Splatoon 1 scene into being one of the most formidable teams to see uh, in the European and the worldwide scene. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is the first time we are able to see, at least on this stage, on this platform, what they're what they're able to do in this game. Uh, and so, obviously, this is a pretty big test for them. Uh, but hopefully, we'll be able to see them convert on some chances in the first map. And so far on the first map, it's been more or less a steamroll on each of these sets. Not sure if it's something about the map that allows these teams to just completely dumpster on the other side, but. Hopefully Spanish Army gives a bit more contention than we've seen in the other sets. Well, it's that, it really is those checkpoints, right? The new thing that got added in. Those checkpoints are at two very inconvenient spots for staying alive. <laughs> you kind of, you know, that first spot, similar to where the zones were in Splatoon 1, that first checkpoint, you really are open from all sides to sloshers and blasters, and of course, two things that we see a lot. And then that second one right at the bottom of that wall, and you, I mean, it just takes a lot of, it takes really two almost two full wipes to get it past those two. Uh, but Spanish Army, it is worth noting, though they were second seed in their pool, their only loss was to Deadbeat. And we've seen what Deadbeat can do. And yeah. it is also worth noting that their loss to Deadbeat was a 2-1. It was not... I mean, they were one of the teams to take a game from Deadbeat. So they've shown that they can compete with top-level teams, as you said, in Splatoon 1 and already here in Splatoon 2. Mm -hmm. It's going to take uh, about the best that they've got, I would imagine, to beat Team Olive. Uh, in terms of the comps that they were using, uh, Layla almost always went T-Tech. Uh, Jonah would switch between the Tri and the Firefin. Tri Slosher and the Firefin okay. Splatter Scope. Um, and Jordy, actually, the only roller, consistent roller player that we that I've seen as far as I could find for any of these players in top eight. Mm -hmm. 
and then um, Aramo going with both the Rapid Blaster and the Custom Blaster. So a pretty balanced comp all yeah. the way top to bottom. So, and they stuck with that pretty consistently. So I think they have something that they think works, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if they stick with it. Certainly really curious to see how, how well the roller does. Obviously, we've the roller as a class as a whole has kind of seen the, the bottom of the stick in a lot of ways, but to be able to at least play on a team like Spanish Army with that as your main, you have to be able to say something with that weapon. So I'm really curious to see, especially against a team of this caliber, uh, how how well that vertical flick can be used on on some, especially especially something like uh, Moray. Uh, so I'm I'm and I, I'm curious to see, yeah, how well they can take advantage of this somewhat seemingly well balanced team composition with some spice thrown into it, and if anything can really go their way. Now, obviously, we were talking about it before. Nike not really using the sniper much at all now. Uh, a funny image of <laughs> any <laughs> snipers to be uh, yet to be bought on his on his console, uh, as he's co seemingly completely foregone the the class, and with right. good reason. Uh, it's <laughs> it's yeah, there's a lot of weapons, especially shooters, that like the ends out that he has been using that has been uh, that has a great kit to be able to use, and he he's been able to at least in some of the tournaments leading up to this use it to a pretty good degree. I mean, we were. We've been able to see Team Olive play at least one tournament so far, um, which they, I believe, were able to win. Correct? It was a four, like it was a four zero grand finals against what was it, Synergy, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, the uh, Thursday night summer splat. Yeah, that was a, um, yeah, that was a, that was a four zero. That was a very convincing win against a strong team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and obviously that was. <laughs> Like immediately after Splatoon. Oh yeah, that was dropped. what, like day six or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, then again, we're still like on what day? It's still within the first two weeks. So obviously, not too much that to be said about like the fluctuation between uh, between a week's play. But right, right. All of doing super well, and and you know Nike having a say in that. And so I'm really, yeah. I, I think obviously all of is the team to be here. Interesting to note that Deadbeat, we haven't really seen them play Team Olive, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I, it's just the set that's been kind of avoided, likely yeah. due to the structure of tournaments as a whole. Like, uh, I know at least for the latter bit of Splatoon 1's lifespan, it, 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 we were seeing Deadbeat in a lot of North American regional tournaments, per se. And that obviously is going to restrict a team like Team Olive with the Europeans they do have apart, uh, they do have apart from Fuzzy. So this is kind of, uh, you know, the first iteration of a tournament where we're able to really see them on the same side of a tournament, as, uh, same winner side, of course. Um, and we'll have to see that they lead up to it because certainly, at least according to the seedings, that's what's predicted to happen. And I'm, I'm hoping to see if Spanish Army can say anything about that. Yeah, I'm hoping so too. We, of course... We we don't want to get ahead of ourselves in talking about it, but I'd be lying if I said that wasn't one that I was really looking forward, and I think a lot of our viewers at home are. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the Team Olive comp that they rolled out. I think I mentioned earlier they used Try, Enzap, and T-Tech. That, that three, whatever dude opts to play, that three takes turf so quickly, and it does it with two ink armors as well. So Spanish Army going to have to be very careful and not let things go through and it looks like Team Olive is going to be using the exact same comp that they used all of day one. Indeed, and we'll be able to see our two teams hop on in towards the middle here. Spanish Army opting for three towards this right side with one kind of tending toward that left. And it looks like two going down already. Yeah. That one Spanish Army member on the left side must have done some insane Whoa. work there. Oh, that's a full wipe! My goodness, Spanish Army with the start of a lifetime, and it looks like they're going to be able to get the Rapid Blaster on the tower as well, get that front line pushing, everything is looking incredible. And with the Roller being able to at least get on tower, Irma is going to be able to push ahead, hopefully with his slap bombs as well, but, but unfortunately going down to Fuzzy here, who has been able to get some control before getting jumped on completely, and it is absolute mayhem on tower here. Soren able to come out on top for just a little bit longer before having to seek refuge in a wall. And he does maybe spot out one player to the right side. Yes, he does. We do have to keep in mind that our team, our players here, can see all these uh, gamer tags, of course. They can, they're not going to be able to see uh, off in the distance the purple text that we do see. But Soren able to catch out a player off to the right side, play a little bit safe to extend his lifespan, and help his teammates get to the middle here. Now they have some in control towards the middle. Now they've taken down, I believe, what was just two 
for a split second. Will they be able to push this up even further? Soren does pop that Ink Armor, somehow gonna get the trade. I guess the Ink Armor wasn't quite active, but I just want to talk about Jonah. Jonah being the catalyst, that T-Tech that made that huge push possible for a Spanish Army, getting, I think, a triple there coming off that uh, that snipe side. So they've got to be careful now. We do see more Ink Armor up. It's finally gone now, and I believe uh, that that was Dude and Fuzzy going up there to overlook, and it looks like it's going to get shut down. I don't think they have anyone else there. Soren going to have to back up. Fuzzy down. So, so far... Spanish army saying, hey, don't, wait a minute. Don't speak too soon. It looks like they're going to splash down just now. Oh, nicely done to be able to get that on top of zones in a moment where they were somewhat vulnerable, obviously. Mm -hmm. 39 to 30, that's a pretty slim margin, especially on something like Tower Control, where the points do tick down so quickly. A Spanish army able to defend successfully, get a lot of ink under their realm once, under the, under the control once again. Uh, Inkstorm will go down in the middle for now, but it's not going to do much to push Spanish Army completely off and loose in fights. In fact, the Roller will be able to get a kill off onto one of Team Olive. But that being said, a direct coming into Soren, that's two down. Team Olive maybe having to, you know, trace some steps back a little bit to get and retreat a little bit to something that's more comfortable, something that they do have more control in. But that being said, Fuzzy able to get a splat down towards the right side of neutral and is going to be able to help start this push if he's able to come out on top of this one v one so far no is the answer but he's going to be able to delegate that responsibility to another teammate and maybe looking to look out for a flank coming out here right he does have ink storm as well and that splash gem not going to do a whole lot soren going to get the kill ermo has a monster task not going to be able to deal with everything in front down. Of him. this should be the lead Dude gonna get a chance to oh, that came out of nowhere! That, that didn't actually get any splats, unfortunately, I believe going down immediately after that, they're gonna be able to immediately take tower. There's only one Spanish Army member, and they're gonna have to be able to take that all Team Olive members. Not able to do that. I think uh, Team Olive here should be able to get the lead. Uh, dude here on this left side, able to maybe get something of a flank, and I think this actually might be able to lead completely to the game, as a lot of King being, uh, control being established here. What exactly went wrong for Spanish Army? I think they just went one or two down and then they just got a little bit too aggressive in trying to get at that tower. That splashdown was kind of a, okay, we'll stop it here, but we'll put all of our cards on the table instead of maybe waiting for Airmo to get back. I think Fuzzy had a very, very timely flank uh, with that inkjet that we talked about earlier, able to not only get in, but get in in a way that he, he really couldn't be dealt with. You know, Airmo in that situation had a monstrous task trying to kill the person on the tower, but then an inkjet comes too. And it was just very, very strong timing there. I wish we could hear their comms because I have no doubt they orchestrated that thing from the start. Very, very uh, great response from Team Olive after kind of letting things slip away in the opening. Yeah, I think, yeah, job well job well done to both sides, really. Spanish Army for obviously the great start. And not only a great start where, you know, we saw Fool's World maybe get a great start too as well. But they were able to follow up on that, and that's something they should certainly be proud of, and and being able to extend the game for as long as they did. Uh, that being said, unfortunately, yeah, as you said it before, maybe playing a little bit too aggressively when they had one or two down, maybe not recognizing that, dang, yeah, that, that we're already at like the 30, 40 point marker, and we're still kind of pushing up into a lot of opponent ink, and maybe this wasn't the smartest thing going off on my own, kind of going for this flank, and that's something that Spanish Army can easily learn from. It's it's harder to learn from situations in the other past two games where it was teams losing in a individual fight, team fights, just on the basis of mere tech alone or what have you. But when when the uh, when the solution is is seemingly as simple as okay, well, we just made a simple mistake of playing a little bit out of our reach uh, in this one instance, and it cost us pretty badly. That's something that's something you should be able to see recover uh, a team recover from. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I will say also made that difficult is you saw earlier Airmo getting those kills on people trying to come up to snipe. Olive definitely made it a premium to keep pressure coming up that front snipe wall. And that's where Fuzzy got that final flank from. Again, just losing track of where everything's going, having to focus on the tower. You know, small small cracks become huge gaps, and that's really what happened there. But uh, it looks like they're going to roll out a pretty similar comp Ooh. here. And unfortunately, Spanish Army, at least one of them going uh, down to the blast of the Rainmaker. But fortunately enough, Spanish Army as well, I believe it was the roller that was able to pick up on it and say, okay, we have one person down. Two of our players are on the wrong side of the map. I, if I get the Rainmaker here, that's crucial. Able to do that, able to stop the push for now, but is that enough? It's still going. 
Mm-hmm. It's still going, and it's going to continue to go. Fuzzy just going to get as many points as he can, say, you know what, it's two on one, I'll just rush it forward. Uh, but now you're already starting to see Dude again with that pro. Dude is going to be the one that they're going to have to be careful about as the kill actually comes on to Dude right as I say that. He's the longest range shooter on the map, and he's the longest range weapon that Olive has right now. He's going to be the one that's playing that pingit role that we saw earlier, which is holding down what's going on. And they got to be careful now. Now there's a little bit of pressure going here on the right. Well, the inkjet especially. Yeah. You got the pressure on the right, inkjet on to the left. Being able to retreat to the position they did was great, but majority unfortunately still going to go down to Fuzzy, who was able to get that inkjet shot before getting splattered off towards the towards his uh, special spawn. That being said, a fight off to the right side here. Dude able to come out on top of Ermo. And he might be able to, you know, help his teammates in, a, in addition to these 1v1 fights. Help them get this Rainmaker push going. They've got a 49 point count. That's great. But are they able to do more than that? And I think they're going to need to go more. I don't think even in solo queue I've seen something in the 40s win on this map. But it does look like they've got two there onto the right. And I believe if they don't have ink armor, they're going to have it very soon with those two ink armor building weapons. Still all up. Two down on the part of Spanish Army. Oh, Gotta the bomb up coming out, though. Yeah. No, there's no way. You can't. You can't. You can't play <laughs> so aggressively. Yeah, dude. This is at least serving as a nice way for Spanish Army to at least recover and at least mm -hmm. get some some, yep. some degree of control. And that, that bomb rush, kudos to whoever popped it there. Uh, unfortunately, Team Alva was, wasn't able to get on top of it. It looks like Irmo what seemed to be for a second surviving in a sea of blue ink, but wasn't able to do so for the longest period of time. Splash on coming down, but it won't be able to get on top of the floor just yet. Storm being pushed down to this latter part of the mid side is going to be able to survive on the other side of the wall. Irmo pushed wow. a little bit too deep, and Olive playing defensive and being rewarded for it. Nicely done there to be able to get at least some control towards the right side, towards where this Rainmaker is, is but unfortunately being reset before they can get control of the, of the area in front of the Rainmaker. So all of Jenna once again have to coordinate some 2v1s for the side. Does actually do that. Take two, mm -hmm. uh, take down two in the meantime, and the Rainmaker's pushing before getting lost oh, to the 46 point marker. Just a little bit too aggressive, I think, that Rainmaker was. He had two teammates there to help, I guess, thought they needed to rush it quick, and they're gonna do it again here. Gonna get it all the way to 27. Yeah. Not a bad push at all, but right now it seems like the team that is making the better use of their specials is the one that we see on top here. That's you saw that. earlier that, yeah, here comes another one. Let's see if they're able to get a kill. I don't know that the ink jets have been that effective here for Spanish Army. Yeah, and again, haven't. not coming in with the kill, you've got to be able to get the kills with that ink jet. And, you know, to their credit, they're not making easy. Nice. Layla going to get a one here. And, all right, it looks like the threat of this push is going to be stopped for now. But now they've got to do the hard part, right? The center of the map is entirely blue. They've got to start there. And it looks like they're doing a decent job of it. One down on each side yeah. and two down on each side now. And we'll see if Jordy's able to get the kill on Fuzzy. Dude gonna be back, and... Quite the vulnerable position right yep. now. We don't see any of Spanish armor really next to him, and... apart from the blaster man. Oh, He's gonna yep. have to offer this right side. They actually might have been distracted. Gets the shot back on the dude, and the roller... Gotta get be with, fast. Get, get the vertical sling, but wow. they get the lead. Wow, able to extend it towards the wall there. And I mean, the only real differences between what happened between the two Rainmaker pushes was that one, that Rainmaker was pushed slightly more to the left, and I think that may have done been something to do with the added lead, but they're still going to be able to push it even further towards the pedestal to the four-point marker in wow. Spanish Army. Oh. They have made their mark. They have made their statement. And with less than a minute to go, Team Olive is sent back to the drawing board. They are, and there's a lot of orange ink here. They're going to get the chance to build their specials. You already see one go down now, the ink storm from Dude. Spanish Army has to be careful here. They cannot let these specials you know, get to them, because you know they're all going to come here. This is really going to be the last chance that they're going to have to make this defense, but they've got to do it. Unfortunately, one going down, they can't make the same mistake they made in the first game where they get too antsy and try to go for the kill. Inkjet is out. Inkjet not going to get a kill, maybe? No, it did get one. Okay, it got nice. fuzzy, but it traded. But is Spanish Army able to hold on? That inkjet that Spanish Army used, he actually wasn't able to use it to a full effect because the, ra the radius of the rain uh, Rainmaker shot is actually able to reach him from the place he was. So with that being said, they, Team Olive, they have five seconds left to go on this, but they're in a pretty good position. Two being down, but Burst Bomb's coming down on the top of the oh, Rainmaker. It's only time. Rainmaker. It's only Rainmaker left. Nice. Everyone else is down. He's going to be able to be half to survive, but with eight seconds left on the Rainmaker, it's looking at it like that isn't the case. That's it. Yeah, that's gonna be it. And Spanish Army able to get the game to get uh, game two in their favor, one to one count. The first time that we've been able to see a set go even so far. So nicely done, the Spanish Army for having the resiliency to really deliver on that last minute push.
Right, and they have to, I mean, right there, I said it, I was so worried that they were going to come in. We saw Jordy go in a little bit too much early there, earlier in that push and go down, but the rest of them just stayed smart. They didn't go down even when Fuzzy used that inkjet, and I mean, that was really the difference that we talked about from game one to game two. Game one, they played very well for the majority of the game, just a couple slips up or slip-ups led to that loss. That time, they tightened things up, and they are rewarded with an incredible come-from-behind win, and they they have to be feeling very great, and we're finally going to get to see the Reef Tower Control. Yes. Yay. Thank you, Lord. Not and this I'm... game, but we will see it eventually. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, but that being said, I, I feel like a lot of people have definitely had a sort of disdain for the Reef. Uh, I'm certainly not one of those folk. It's actually one of my favorite maps, but there's definitely something to be said about how quick and, I won't say easy, but... Um, how how teams are definitely enabled by the map design to be, to push a lot more quickly and close out games than on other maps. Um, at least that's my feel for it. But that being said, we're going into Humpback Pump Track, and that's uh, obviously Splat Zones. We were able to see Fool's, uh, Fool's I was about to say Fool's Gold, uh, Fool's World be able to take on, you know, show show that extra step being taken on in game three. Let's see if that's able to replicate, that sort of situation is able to replicate itself here where both teams are tied up, everything is really possible, and we'll see two slaughters on the behalf of Team Olive, uh, one the Try and one the Vanilla. Whereas on with the Spanish Army here, it doesn't really seem like too much is changing. Yeah, it's interesting to see them go with the Fire Fin here, that of course being there because Bomb Rush on this map is nice. Uh, but yeah, the double slosher comp, something that we've seen a lot, and that really kind of uh, shows the state of the meta right now. It's, it's sloshers and somehow coming into control despite being down. I think this control is going to go away very quickly. Uh, Aramo though, well, barely getting taken down by Fuzzy. Great play here. Fuzzy going to get this inkjet in a fairly safe landing spot. And now this is, this is more of what we're used to seeing from Olive. Lots of control all over the map using those quick shooters. And they got to find a way to get back in now. Aramo pushed all the way back and they're... Three of them on the right side here. Nicely done. Yeah. Fuzzy by half Wonderful. the half there the reactions is. to get that midair yep. kill. And now with Spanish Army having two down, maybe even three, if Fuzzy's able to come out on top of this one, doesn't have the ink to be able to do so though. And <laughs> Layla sad. now being able to have the opportunity to come out on top. Unfortunately, though, the burst bomb will be able to strike that down for just a little bit before the roller gets onto the middle. Fourth zone splash down. Oh, I don't really know about the position positioning of that one. Of course, the radius of the splash down not able to be used to its full effect with the wall in front of them. But Team Olive still, uh, with the control they do have, they have three players put to this right side, which, I mean, to be fair, Spanish Army is seeing to push to that left side now, maybe not positioned as great as they can be. And just in a split second, Spanish Army able to get a control of zones to get that, to stack that penalty on, delay the game even further, and at least give their team some time to recover. As For the most part in this game, we've seen at least one or two of Spanish Army down at nearly all times. Mm -hmm. You know, you're absolutely right, and unfortunately, Jonah here on the left side, not going to get anything going with that sniper, because Dude has spotted out, and Dude, once again, playing the most ranged weapon, going to keep putting pressure there. Jordy kind of having to do the do the devil's work right now, trying to come in, and unfortunately, just getting taken out by all this aggression and all these quick weapons. We do finally see, um, Jeez, I believe that's Ermo. Yeah, wow. I love this view. I love this <laughs> view so much. It's literally just a bunch of burst bombs and suction bombs, splat bombs, everything that you can think of with bombs attached to it going down for a little bit before some going down to the fight. That's two down, three down now, and Team All doing it, uh, such a good job. They should be able to, if they win this next upcoming fight, they should be able to lock this game out and take game three. Ten missiles go out to at least match number one. The Spanish Army here is opting to split up to some degree. Obviously, two players we see on our side kind of going to this left side, recognizing they have some time to play with the flank all the way around, but Dude is going to be able to at least see one of them patch a hit marker onto one before going back to mid. This marker, this this timer is going down for certain, but this slosher is also near zones. They can't seem to get on top of it, and it looks like the Ancient might be able to help get control of the zone again, but unfortunately going down immediately after it, and that is that Team Olive doing such a good job there, despite the look of it all towards the end. <laughs> stay in control of zone and obviously that's what most is most important being able to rotate themselves as much as they did around zone and just make sure everybody had every area every square feet where any opponent could possibly come from having that checked out yeah and you see there not a lot of not very big numbers on the ka there of spanish army it looked like they went with the longer range comp there hoping that they could kind of harass the zone and maybe take advantage of the shorter range comps that olive was running but 
Uh, dude playing the role of harasser allowed Fuzzy to get in, and you saw Fuzzy with the biggest KA there working way, his way through, kind of flanking the flanks, if you will. You saw a lot of pressure coming on that right side for Spanish Army. That was really where they opted to put all their chips, but it seemed like uh, they spotted it out very well. Fuzzy able to get behind what was going on, and that was... That was more of the performance that we saw day one from Team Olive. But we are back to tower control now. This is a mode that Spanish Army played very well on in that game one. Uh, but this is one that they're going to have to be careful at because the Reef reef can snowball in this mode very, very easily. Certainly. And uh, yeah, like it, it's like I was saying before, it's kind of a uh, risky pick for some teams. Uh, we'll have to see how teams take advantage of their start in particular. You can certainly see it go and sway towards one team's uh, favor instantly just right off the bat and that that kind of momentum the game on the reef but let's see how that takes place whereas where we're gonna see literally no changes to team all of team composition and i believe the same is to be said about spanish army so them definitely sticking to their devices uh and it looks like two uh three one split uh in comparison to a sort of two two split Spanish Army having two go down, it, with that being said, and with the one member kind of trying to go up the wall and aggress on the dude, but won't be able to get onto it. Fuzzy able to take them down, and now Spanish Army is left to their last member standing. And you were saying it before, this kind of this kind of star can be pretty important. We might be able to see some of that right now. Yeah, it might be, and I, I want to give credit to Fuzzy there. I think Fuzzy took out three people there, and then the fourth with the assist of Dude doing a great job of moving around the map and playing around all the chaos that's happening. Yikes. And again, now Soren's up Yikes. there. Yikes! And Fuzzy finally going oh, down, but his job is certainly... Uh, he certainly got what he wanted out of that entire situation. Nike going to be back around the tower. It looks like they're going to opt out of it, be content with that 26, but the pressure is still certainly on, as we see a lot of... Ooh guns on this bridge and uh, this is why the map is so swingy they're already back assaulting the base and it looks like spanish army says okay we've, we've had enough of that but they've got to be able to get soren off this bridge somehow and he does have ink armor ready and i i don't know that was certainly not what you wanted to see if you were spanish army but uh olive wow this is this is looking bad <laughs> yeah double the double ink armor being popped there for team olive to get control once again uh, they didn't. They only got one spot in the meantime, but they were able to get that blue ink uh, unlocked for the most part uh, and get that tower back to a, a decent position. But with that being said, the Spanish Army they they have you know they have you know momentum. Oh, Jonah! Now. Jonah though just came with a huge flank off of the left side and gets three people. This is. Okay, this is the chance that they need. They have a lot of ink. They should be able to get a lot of ink near that tower path. Soren going to take out Jonah, and I don't know. Ermo's going to come in. If Ermo can get this kill onto Soren, they might be able to get a little bit of a push going. Looks like it's going to be too little too late, though, and Dude going to come around and clean up Ermo. It looks like, no, Ermo moving around pretty well. Eh, they're dancing all right. Ermo does go down finally, and uh, I think oh, this nice. is going to be the end of the push, but... Wow, Jonah there getting that triple, giving uh, Spanish Army the chance that they might have needed, but it looks like they weren't able to capitalize, not able to get enough guns there at the right time, and... Oh, man, this map is so blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost, you said that's so blue, too. Uh, but with that being said, um, you know, Team Olive here able to push to a point where, oh, okay, maybe not able to get on Spanish Army, never mind, able to get on top of Layla, one of their primary shooters. That's a full wipe coming in on the behalf of Team Olive. Now, Team Olive obviously gonna be able to push themselves in a position where they're best enabled to kind of stymie off any any green member coming towards this tower. Obviously, they've gotten rid of two checkpoints and they don't really need to deal with the delay that might happen uh, if they hadn't gotten to those checkpoints in a, in a hot minute. But uh, Spanish Army, for the most part, it is in a clear disadvantage to uh, they can't. They can't avoid dealing with power for any really direct, or any any long duration of time. And being forced to focus so much on the objective objective makes their movement so predictable. And that's the upper hand that kind of team Olive has now with such an established lead with the kind of territory they have over the map. They're being popped now towards a very blue bridge, uh, and unfortunately, they is going to have to back off for now. Or uh, can one up again, and now no. being no. Oh. no. Oh, that, that yeah. Wow. I don't know if I've seen anybody die that hard the rest of this turn. <laughs> there were three people there putting guns on it. But now we're going to see another counter push coming out here. Another ink armor pop just continuing to 
put on the pressure and again force that predictable play sometimes we talked about you know how you can get a little bit too antsy and going on objective to be fair sometimes you have to and this is one of those situations where they have to and it looks like they've done a pretty good Nike, job to okay. be able to stymie this one uh fuzzy gonna jump in but you know not too big of a deal but this is this is really the last thing the amount of mistakes that you're gonna be able to make is lower than ever your margin for error is razors oh, not oh, able to get the kill that was key yeah yeah and that's especially as soon as you were saying margin of error too you had such a great opportunity to not only come down and get the advantage onto opponent that they didn't know you they didn't know you were there but unfortunately not able to make the shots uh, after landing that burst bomb, and that really hurts for uh, for Spanish Army here, who really needed to use that opportunity as uh, a, as a kind of jumping start to an overtime play. This being that being said, like Team All, if they had two down, Spanish Army has a pool to play in in the middle of a sea. But unfortunately, it's just that, and that'll be game for Team Olive, as they are going to be able to take game three here, or sorry, game. Game three or four, correctly, right? Uh, now. Four. It, there it's, their th it's their third game that they won, yeah, but yes, yeah. game four. Uh, and <laughs> fun, fun little thing. I don't know how many kills actually came up from it, but dude did get the Tenta missiles off as we see ten ink armors coming in on the part between the two. Six uh, Tenta missiles coming out for dude. Specials all around there, but like you said, uh, a pool in a sea, <laughs> a pool of green in a sea of blue, and that's really what the whole match was. Once. Fuzzy got those big, big kills at the very start of the match, that early triple. Like you said, they were just forced to play predictable. The onus is always on whoever is behind to make that push. And you know what path the tower has to go. You know that someone has to be on it if the tower is moving. And unfortunately for Spanish Army, Team Olive was just all over it. And um, great, great stuff by Team Olive there. A very, very strong performance. And yeah, that's the third set we have so far out of coming out of winners uh, winners quarters.